Hey guys, I'm Hop. You're watching TFB TV. Over the summer, I had the opportunity to go down to the Historic Gunsight Academy in Arizona to shoot a couple of new guns from Mossberg, including this, the MC2 SC. This is a brand new, optics-ready, double-stack micro 9mm. Let's take a closer look at it. Before we get into the specifics of this pistol, let's talk briefly about the history of the Mossberg MC series. The first one that Mossberg came out with was the MC1 SC. It was a single stack micro 9mm, and it came out when the Glock 43 was at its peak of popularity. Unfortunately, right around the same time, the SIG P365 also came out, and that completely upended the concealed carry market. The second gun in the series was the MC2C. It was more of a standard compact size, a little bit smaller than a Glock 19, but a little bit bigger than a Generation 1 Smith & Wesson M&P Compact. The MC2 was a fine gun, but it was just not particularly exciting. That brings us to this pistol, the MC2 SC. This checks all the boxes that the market is currently interested in right now. It is a high capacity double stack micro 9mm that is optics capable right out of the box. The MC2 SC has a standard magazine capacity of 11 rounds in the flush fit magazines. It can also be used with the 14 round magazines from the MC2C with a little plastic grip sleeve adapter. Like all the pistols in the MC series, the 2SC can be had with or without a manual crossbolt safety. I greatly prefer it without the safety. The MC2SC also has a pretty good trigger out of the box. It's very similar to a Glock style trigger with a trigger safety blade. However, it's got a flat face, has an improved pull, and a somewhat cleaner break than you'd probably get out of a stock Glock trigger. The real triumph of this pistol is the optics cut. The 2SE comes from the factory cut for J-point style micro red dots. For example, the Shield RMSC. This one currently has a crimson trace on it. What's really impressive about this pistol is that Mossberg was able to get the optics cut so low that you can actually co-witness the standard height iron sights through the optic. The 2SC comes with either white three-dot sights or tritium dot night sights. Both of them have a U-notch rear, and they both co-witness through the red dot, despite the fact that they are not extra tall suppressor or co-witness height sights. Being able to co-witness the iron sights through the red dot is useful for a whole bunch of different reasons. One, it's just nice to be able to have a backup option if the red dot fails. Say, if the battery runs out or you smash it in a car door or something, and you still need to be able to take a shot. It can also help if you're struggling to acquire a sight picture with the red dot. That's something that you get better at with practice. Basically, any configuration of a specific red dot and a specific pistol is going to present slightly differently, so that can be pretty useful. While we were shooting these pistols in Arizona, we ran through something called the Gunsight Urban Scrambler course, which is basically a long string of positional shots. You basically never take more than one or two shots from any given position before you move, and you have to reacquire a sight picture every single time. I had trouble acquiring a sight picture with the red dot on a couple of positions of that course, and I found that it was very easy to just drop back to using the iron sights. As far as the handling characteristics of this gun go, I find that the grip is shaped very well and has a really fantastic texture on it. I also like the inclusion of these little textured pads on the side of the frame, give you a place to index your support hand thumb or your index finger. Kind of like uh, Taurus memory pads, you know I'm a big fan of those. The controls are great, but they are not ambidextrous. The magazine release has a nice texture to it, and the slide release is functional, well-placed. The slide serrations front and rear are pretty nice. The front slide serrations are nice for manipulating the slide if you don't want to be coming into contact with the red dot all the time. One thing I would like to see is the inclusion of an extended pinky rest base plate for the flush fit 11 round magazine. I am not able to get my pinky finger onto the gun at all, so it pretty much just hangs uselessly down below. Not a problem if I'm using the 14 round magazines from the 2SC with the little filler piece in there, then I can get a full grip on it, but still something I would like to see in the box. I'm sure you'll be able to buy them separately, but I honestly think it should just come with the pistol. As far as shooting characteristics go, the combination of the nice trigger and the red dot means that it's very easily to shoot accurately with this pistol. Hey Hop, so, why are you trying to make me look bad? I was trying to, so this was Not even trying. It also handles recoil extremely well. I put over 300 rounds of some hot ammunition through this gun in a single day. It doesn't beat you up and recoil is extremely manageable even with those plus P loads. The trigger is pretty good, however, I'm not a big fan of flat face triggers. I always wrap my finger all the way around the trigger because I'm a big person, I have long fingers, and we all know that trigger finger placement is bogus FUD lore. If I shoot enough rounds through a gun with a small trigger guard and a flat face trigger like this, it usually gives me a blister somewhere on my index finger. 
not the end of the world. Also, you have to shoot quite a lot of rounds in a single session for that to become an issue. And I think a lot of people really like flat face triggers. As far as reliability goes, this pistol, the serial number, was assigned to me for the Mossberg event. TFB TV camera guy Ryan also had one pistol assigned to him. We each put probably about 300 to 350 rounds through these pistols in basically a day's time and neither of us had any failures of any kind. That being said, this event took place during probably the worst part of the ammo crisis, and we were lucky to have any ammunition to shoot at all. Thankfully, Hornady stepped up to the plate to provide ammunition for us to evaluate these pistols with. Unfortunately, the only ammo they could get on such short notice was critical duty, which is a top tier defensive load, so it's not a fantastic measure of reliability. Now that I've got this pistol back in my hands for further testing, I've been shooting more standard range ammunition, and I still have had no failures of any kind, so I suspect this will continue to be a very reliable gun. Final thoughts on the MC2 SC. I am extremely impressed with this pistol so far, enough so that this is actually going to be my new concealed carry gun as soon as I can find the right holster for it. Kind of a brief note on holster availability, Mossberg has been working with a couple of holster manufacturers, so this pistol will have holsters available on day one. However, if you're really picky about holsters like I am, you may have to wait a little bit for the right one to become available. Once I can find a holster that suits my needs, I'm going to make this my go-to carry pistol, so hopefully that lets you know how much I really like this thing. I'm going to carry this gun, I'll continue shooting it, and I will keep you guys posted with long-term reliability updates if anything interesting happens. That's the show, guys. Thanks for watching. TFB TV is supported by our sponsors Ventura Munitions and Top Gun Supply. We're also directly supported by our viewers via Subscribestar and Patreon. You can find links to both of those in the video description, and we would really appreciate your support. As a way to say thanks, James is always running some cool giveaways for our patrons and substars. So, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.